Breaking news. The weather has finally stopped sucking ass long enough to finally get out and go fishing. Well, we've got bluebird skies. Absolutely zero wind. Perfect conditions if you don't want to catch any trout. So, um, you know, the plus side is, is that I had to walk through this. Um, so my, my legs are bleeding. You know, I'd say all in all, not too bad. First cast, lost my fly, had to retie. And um, we're in about an inch and a half of water. Third cast in, lost my other fly. Um, so I want to make sure that I didn't have any flies left um, when I left here today. So I think a, a mission is almost accomplished. Hey everybody, and welcome back to Big Meadow Mike's. And as you just saw from that quick clip, I was finally able to get out and do some fly fishing a few weeks back. And uh, well, let's just say it was uh, uh, not that eventful. Um, but you know what, hey, any channel can show people catching fish. Here at Big Minnow Mike's, I wanna show you how to lose flies, what not to do, things like that. So I think I'm doing a pretty good job. I'm really doing a public service for you guys. But uh, you know what, I wasn't gonna give up without a fight. So um, I went out again a few days later and let's take a look at how I did. Well, the wind is only at about 55 miles an hour today, which should make for uh, some pretty good fly fishing. I found a little cove down here and on one of my early videos, um, I caught a really nice, probably five and a half pound uh, rainbow trout. So we're gonna try to do that again today, but uh, I don't see anything in the water. So we'll see what happens. So the first spot just showed no signs of life. So we're gonna move over to uh, another little creek area. And uh, today we're gonna do, I don't know if you can see that or not. That's probably not even close to in focus. Here we go. Um, little San Juan worm with the Reddington butter stick. So if anything else, you know, this would be good for just a tiny little creek trout, um, bluegill, something like that. So I just wanna see if I can get that bluegill bend on this butter stick. So we'll see what happens. Strike two. So we're gonna go to another spot over here. And uh, this one's got a little bit of water flowing through. So I don't know if that really means anything. Maybe there's a bluegill over here, maybe not, who knows. But uh, let's give it a whirl. I'd be happy with anything, really. So, see what happens. Oh, hey, hey, you're back. All right, riveting stuff, right? Well, you know what? Round two is a bust, but that's just the way it goes sometimes. Oh, well, you know what? It happens. So I may have lost the ability to fish, but I sure haven't lost the ability to spend money. So that being said, I've actually got an unboxing today of some items that are new to me, not new to the world, but new to me that I'm gonna try this spring. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna be trying them here in a couple weeks at a farm pond, and I'm super excited to show you. Um, they're absolutely insane. I've never seen anything like these before. So stick around for a second, watch. Well, this is less, than an unboxing and more of just showing you what's in the box. I listen, I was so excited about getting these. I couldn't even wait to open it in front of you guys. I just wanted to open it up and just take a look at it myself. I, I just love this stuff. I think it's just so crazy. So I got JDM Tackle from a place called Carolina Fishing Tackle. They're out of North Carolina. I'll put all their information down the link below. But I gotta show you this stuff, guys. It is absolutely insanely bizarre stuff. And I love it. So I love collecting anything old, anything unique, and this certainly falls into the unique category. I'm also going to just preface this by saying, if you're on a budget, this isn't exactly budget-friendly tackle. I mean, it's pretty expensive stuff. So some of this I'll probably collect, and then some of it I'll throw with caution. I'm sure I'll lose it immediately, whatever. That's just my luck. But let's just go ahead and dive into what we got here. So let's start with a couple top waters that I picked up here. These are from the Akashi brand. Okay. And take a look at this. So it's kind of like a popping style bait. Hedden makes a bait like this, and of course, now I'm brain farting on what it's called, um, where they have a kind of a metal piece at the top that helps with the popping. 
But this is just radically different than that. I mean, what a spin on that. It looks like some kind of, I don't know, octopus or squid or something with the, it's got like 3D eyes on it. I mean, really, really crazy and bizarre. Um, and the hooks and the quality of this is, is really, it's pretty phenomenal. So this is the one that I'm gonna fish with. So I'll go ahead and take this one out of the box for you so you can just kinda see a better look at it. And the only reason I'm gonna be fishing with this one is just because I think this color is gonna work a little better than that red and blue. So let's pull this out of the package real quick. And let's take a look at this bad boy. So you can get a, a little better look at this. Look at the color on that. So it's got like a, a mirrored type bottom end on it that I think would give some really good reflection in the water. You can hear the rattle. I mean, just the quality of the craftsmanship. I think these are all handmade. I mean, everything's kind of hand screwed in there. Look at these hooks too. They're not even treble hooks. They're just a kind of a double hook. And then you have this small spinner blade here on the back. Just a super crazy, unique design. Uh, look at the bulging eyes on that too. Pretty crazy, huh? I've never seen anything like it. So, of course, I had to have it. But if you want to get one of these, they're going to set you back a little bit. They're $35 a piece. Yeek! Thank God my wife doesn't watch this. Okay, the next thing that I got here is, in my opinion, more crazy than the item before. Uh, this is absolutely insane. I don't know what they were thinking, but this is called the Gong by Mega Bass. And essentially what it is, is it's just a gorilla. That's right, you heard me. Gorilla Square Bell. Look at this. Now look at the back of this packaging as well too. Doesn't that remind you of like an old Super Mario game from back in the 90s or something? Just the artwork on that. Uh, very cartoony kind of comic strip like then the packaging on this is super cool I'm gonna take one of these out as well too and show you but what guy at Mega Bass is like you know what I really think a gorilla is probably the best fit I don't know who cares don't care love it I'm still gonna try it the action on this I bet is pretty out of control it's got a real tight waving action uh, at least from the videos that I saw but the tight waving but also aggressive if that makes any sense I'll try to get a video of it here in a couple weeks, but I got a red, I got a white, and then those are the juniors. This is the the larger one right here, and this is just their original gong. Look at that price, twenty four ninety nine. Not exactly the world's cheapest stuff, but certainly cool. Now let me pull one out for you here. So, like I said before, I'm gonna be taking a few of these out to a little farm pond and I wanna give you just a closer look. Now for the money, you're like, man, they better be pretty good. Well, they are, I mean, the quality on these are pretty remarkable. And look at the, look at the front end on this. It's got like a beaded eye. It's got like a really nice paint job on there too. Uh, super sturdy hooks. I mean, nice quality on this. They even label it what year it came out. This is a 2016. Uh, pretty cool. What I like about it is, it w like the other Topwater, this has a, a little blade on the back as well too. So, kind of sets it apart from your typical square bills. And I don't know if that is something that they do overseas, if they have uh, these spinners on the back of a lot of their square bills just for the extra flash. Uh, you don't see that on a lot of stuff that we have here, but um, certainly cool and definitely different. And last and certainly not least, we have something that uh, if you watch any kind of YouTube fishing, you've certainly seen these baits before. Uh, they've become increasingly popular in the, in the past year, and that's these G-Crack baits. Once again, expensive for soft plastics, 10 bucks for a bag of these, but... Um, I, I just wanted to give them a try. I, I had to see, you know, what's it all about. You might be able to get a better view of kind of what they look like. It's a ridged worm on this one, okay? And it's got a lot of this uh, scent in, in in here. And that's why I, I have to keep these separate from the rest of my baits because, I mean, it's literally oozing out of the package. Um, 
maybe that's a good thing. And lastly, I want to introduce you to somebody new here. We've got Bert. Bert's new to the Big Minnow crew. Uh, he's going to be a new co-host of ours. And uh, Bert is a Basset Hound, so this is going to be Bert the Basson Basset. And uh, so he'll be a reoccurring guest. You'll see him quite a bit on Big Minnow Mics, and we're happy to have him. So, Bert, welcome to the crew. Glad to have you here. Guys, stick around for Fish and Flashbacks. In this Fish and Flashback, we're going to look back at a few promotional baits from the mid-1990s that I think pair pretty nicely together. Now, in the mid-1990s, or all the 1990s, there was a lot of things that paired nicely together. You had uh, things like Milli Vanilli, uh, you had Cheeto Fingers and Controller Grease. You guys know what I'm talking about. You also had uh, Grunge Music, Flannel Shirts, and Doc Martens. That's kind of a trifecta. They all kind of work together. Well, here's two things that I think pair very nicely, and that's Budweiser and Camels. And I'm not just talking about beer and ciggies, folks. I'm talking about fishing lures here. So I'm going to go over just a couple of these pretty cool promotional items from a bygone era that you just don't see anymore. Now, let's get started first with the Joe Camel, okay? Now we're going to take a look at this. So I have two here. One is a topwater. The other one is a deep diver. I believe they had three different options, but these are the two that I have. So in order to get these, I think you had to buy three packs of Siggies and then you got this free. You didn't even have to use your Camel Bucks. And think about that. When's the last time you've heard Camel Bucks? Talk about something that's just completely gone away that no one's heard of in quite some time. So obviously uh, Joe Camel did it smart. <clears throat> that even makes sense. What they did here is they basically just used the exact same lure head and they just popped something different. So on this one, you see a lip on the front of his... Uh, kind of camel snout there. And then on the back of the head on this one, let's go ahead and pull that back over here. You see that uh, on the top water, it's simply just a prop they put on the back of it. Pretty gimmicky, really cool, something you don't see today. In fact, this is probably something you wouldn't even have seen, seen 10 years ago. Certainly something, like I said before, from a bygone era. So um, very cool. I thought that was fun. So what else do we have here? What was everybody's favorite Super Bowl ad of 1996? I know, I'm sure you thought of it right off the top of your head. The Budweiser Frogs, right? Well, here you go. Now you can enjoy that commercial and fishing all at the same time. So you've got the Budweiser. I know that was an absolutely horrible <laughs> impression, but it is what it is. What's cool about these is they actually would say Budweiser, if you had a little piece of metal or something that you tapped against these two screws right there, well, let's see here, right there. Sorry, it's hard for me to do this and not look at it. If you had a little piece of metal or something you could tap against those, it would actually say Budweiser. So, pretty cool. Now, this is actually a functional bait. You could use this if you wanted to. Um, I would probably say that your hookup ratio would be very weak because this looks like it would be hollow body. It's actually just one big fat battery with a couple hooks. So um, pretty cool, very gimmicky. I like it a lot. And finally, last, last but not least, say that five times fast, we have some pretty cool Budweiser bobbers from 1993. I'm gonna try to just get uh, get this where you can see this a little better. There we go. How cool is that? This is kind of a crossover item. So when you're getting your flannel shirt and Doc Martin over at Spencer's Gifts, or I don't even know if they sold it there, probably Hot Topic or whatever else existed back then, you probably could have picked this up at either Spencer's or Bass Pro Shop. I mean, this is kind of a gimmicky crossover item that uh, is actually functional. You could use these bobbers. They're pretty cool. Now, Budweiser is not new to making um, promotional baits or, or you know items like this. In fact, they have a lure that I believe is, um, came out in the early 80s, maybe even late 70s, that looked just like this, had the can, and then also had a square bill lip on the front, and it had a little, I think it may have two hooks, and then had like kind of a spinning paddle thing on the back of it. So um, certainly not Budweiser's first rodeo, into uh, fishing baits and lures and gimmicks and what have you. So, anywho, I thought that was pretty exciting. Well, 
interesting, maybe not exciting, but uh, hope you all enjoyed and uh, we'll see you on the water.